What is going on guys, this is the Mafia Garage here. I'm here making a review on my 2006 Scion XA. I just want to start off by saying why Scion, like why did Scion bring, well why did Toyota bring Scion to the United States? So like Scion was introduced in 2003. It was created to appeal towards the youth. Uh, in my eyes, the car only, like it appeared to the youth only from the TC and the FRS. Other than that, all the other cars were loved by the old folks because whenever I sit inside this car and like I take my mom out shopping or something like that, uh, she just loves getting into the car because it, it doesn't really hurt her back. It, you just slide right into the car. It just there's no issues. You don't have any back problems trying to like bend down or try to get into like a smaller car. This car, like the seat height, is just right to where you can just turn your body and just sit right down. Um, I just want to go around the whole car. Now this car is not perfect by any means. I did rebuild the car. So this car does have a reconstructed title. But the car runs and drives beautifully. And I have no complaints with it because it just takes me to school, takes me to work. And that's about it. Now this car is a 2006, so it does have the updated taillights. Uh, the 2004 and 2005 ones have um, uh, orange indicators in the taillights. And they have different side skirts, I believe. And uh, the 06s came with the side view mirror turn signals, while the 04 and 05s didn't. So this is a Scion XA in America. But in Japan, the Scion XA already came out in 2002. That's when they started it out. Um, the, in Japan, it was called the Toyota Ist. So it was just uh, to try to show what they can compare with, like stylist um, or some other things. I, I forgot what it said on there. But uh, they're just trying to just uh, show the youth what they can do with these cars. In Japan, it kind of kicked off with the younger population. But in America, it didn't really kick off like that unfortunately but i mean i seem to like it. Yeah, i'm 23 years old I, I i like this car uh we'll just go inside the car and we'll see uh the interior now it does have power windows uh the car does have abs but it doesn't have trash trash traction control i'm sorry and um what else does it have yeah, so it has ABS, but it doesn't have traction. traction. Ah, can't even speak today. Traction control. Uh, I think this is where the traction control button will be, and I think the fog light button. My car doesn't have fog lights because it's the base model. My car is a five-speed manual. They came in either five-speed manuals or they came in um, a four-speed automatic. And in America, they're all mated with the 1NZ FE motor, which is a 1.5 liter motor. And in Japan, they came in two options. They came in a 1.3 motor. Uh, that motor, I forgot the engine's code. but And then they came in a 1.5 liter over there. Also, they came in all-wheel drive in Japan. And I'm like, wow. Man, they never bring over the good stuff over here. I'm like, what the heck? But it does come with a Pioneer stock radio. Uh, the aux cable is down here. So you just connects to the center console and you know this let me just sit in here there goes the center display right there just like the Yaris and the Echo uh, they all share like the same motors the Yaris Echo and I believe another car I forgot what the name was but uh maybe I might I might remember it but um you can see here now the car doesn't have a temperature gauge, but you see that little red light above the battery that just went away? That is the temperature indicator. That will say, hey, uh, when it's blue, when you first turn on the car, it says the car is still cold, and then it'll go away. And then if it turns red, then that means the car is overheating and you gotta shut up the car. But my car does have 65,549 miles. Uh, this car was a low mileage car when I got it from Copart. And I just fixed it up. Um, 
has like little cubbies over here. It has a lot, a lot of small storage places that Toyota thought, you know, younger generation will like because I can fit my smartphone right in there and a whole bunch of other stuff like my wallet and my keys. Here goes the ashtray. And you see there's another cubby right here, two cup holders. I believe that's a cup holder right there. I'm not too sure. Um, there's other cubby spots right there on the sides. And then the car is like, it looks small, but I'm six foot two and I have like a lot of headroom. So I don't know if you guys can see this. You see, my head does not hit on the top. But uh, go around. It's very comfortable. Uh, my other brothers, uh, six foot one and the other one's 5'11". They sit in the back comfortably with the seats sit like a recline back to my position. They can sit back there and they don't have a problem at all. So I'm gonna just go around the car. And if it's kind of windy on the video, I'm very sorry. It's just a windy day, but this is the only day I could film it because it's nice and warm out. Now let me open up the doors. Now I believe the car came with like uh, Scion specific formats, but unfortunately my car did not come with it. Uh, I mean, it did, probably did come with it, but when I bought this car, it didn't come with it. It came with some no name brand formats that don't really do well for the car as you can see they always slide around but back here you can see back seats are okay and right here if you pull this little latch right here the seats come down all the way flat which is just amazing because um i checked out the nissan versa and when you put the seats all the way down the seats like the trunk is lower than when the seats go down so it's kind of weird how that goes. And the same thing goes for my mom's RAV4. Uh, when you put down the seats, it kind of inclines. It doesn't go down straight. So right here. So if the car is kind of dirty, you know, I just use this as an everyday vehicle. So yeah, it's going to be kind of dirty. Because to be honest with you, I haul wheels in this thing. I haul car parts in this thing. So... It gets dirty and I do clean it up, but right now it's just, you know, kind of dirty. Pull up the hatch, the hatch comes up and it's held on by these struts right here, the gas struts. And right here is a little car cover. So when you have stuff back here, no one can like look through the window and see what you're, you know, what you're carrying. But right here, it's always loaded because I have like a jumper pack. I have a box of tools, jumper cables, rope, like uh, gloves and um a tire fix kit and a tire uh pump so i just have these just in case because i see people break, break down on the road i help them or if i were to break down on the road i can help myself you know so that's just how i keep it under there is the spare tire uh let's go back here just grab this little handle to pull it down just goes down like that car comes with 15 inch steelies on mine but i believe some other uh scions like the fully loaded ones come with alloy wheels and for a little bit a little amount of time i think in 2004 they made like a special run of these in like i think it's like the dark cherry color i believe it was or i'm not too sure i think it was just different colors but um they only made like a thousand of them and it's called the Scion XA Special Edition. Now I'm not too sure what's the biggest difference on them compared to mine, but I'm sure they came with like special wheels and special, like a lot of stuff that's different. Maybe the radio is different. I'm not too sure, but let's just pop the hood here and let's go under the hood. Now this badge is not for a Scion XA. It's actually for a Scion TC. But when I got this car, it never came with the front badging. So I didn't like it to be like that. And I did not paint it like that. It just came like that. So, yes. <laughs> Let's pull this up. you will know from a previous video I did install strut brace so as you guys can see um, this is the 1NZ FE motor this is the 1.5 liter motor, motor. Uh, as you can see the strut brace did not come on this car this is a factory option 
and um, the transmission is made to a C350 five-speed transmission. And um, the automatics, I can't really tell what the transmission is for them, but uh, for this car, uh, I just know the five-speed manual uh, factory code for it. And um, I was looking up online really quick for the 1.3 liter. It's called the 2NC FE motor. And they only came in the front-wheel drive models in Japan. And uh, all-wheel drive models came with the 1.5 liter. Uh, the 1.5 liter motors here, uh, I believe they came with 103 horsepower. I think it's around 6,000 RPMs they kick in. And then it came with 101 foot-pounds of torque, which kicked in around 4,200 RPMs. Now, this car, I mean, um, you see this TRD strut bar? It, Toyota did offer a lot of stuff for this car, for the TRD package. Uh, it came with the TRD strut brace. I believe it came with TRD struts. It came with TRD springs. Uh, uh, I think a TRD intake. TRD brake pads. The fronts are just discs and the rear are drums. So it just came with TRD front brake pads and it came with the TRD cat back. So those are all dealer options. I believe you could still order them from the dealer. I ordered the strut brace from the dealer. Um, honestly, I think I forgot the number on uh, the part number on it. But uh, the TRD uh, springs, they dropped the car one inch to 1.5 inches uh oh and it came with the trd rear sway bar so that was a 22 millimeter rear sway bar that came with the car and that thing would make the car corner even harder this car will be like a little track monster that's why people in japan they love these cars because they don't have to be that fast they could just be quick and nimble and you know, this is a nice little economical car that you can just have fun with. Like the Scion FRS and the Toyota and Toyota GTA 6 and the Subaru BRZ, they're not really fast cars. They like have 200 horsepower and everyone is just giving them flack about it. But if they drive it and they take it around a corner and it, do, and it forgives you for every corner you take, you could take the tail out and everything like that. It's just a fun car to drive. You don't need a lot of power to have fun. You know, it's better to drive a slow car fast than a fast car slow. That's what I tell everybody. Cause I drive an MR2 and it's like, it sucks when, it, when you drive it slow, but when you drive it fast, it's like, it's fun. But this car, you could drive it fast and still be under the speed limit. So it's like, all right, that's awesome. You know? Um, so let's see. Um, the car has an optional supercharger from blitz not optional from the factory but that is an option let's say if you want to make more power into this thing they they say it could make 160 horsepower which is like eh, you know i don't know because the supercharger costs 3400 dollars. but what i think you could do is possibly drop in a 2zz motor from like a toyota celica or a Lotus Elise because they come with the two ZZs or a Toyota Matrix, Matrix XRS. So, yeah, you could do that too. But hey, the option is totally yours, you know. You can get a supercharger, you know, 160 horsepower. It'd be the coolest kid on the block. Like, who has a Scion with a supercharger? Come on, guys. Like, you guys can definitely win over the crowd. You know, and on top of that, you'll have a lot of whooshy noises and the whiny noises and your your car will be like, you know, whining all the time. It'll be awesome. But you know what you could do? The best mod ever. Forget about the supercharger. Forget about the 2ZZ. Just loosen up your alternator belt and no, not loosen up your alternator belt. I'm sorry. Just remove all the power steering fluid out of your car there goes your whine right there the power steering pump will start whining and you can tell people i have a supercharger that i made my own Nah, i'm just joking guys but it's totally up to you You guys can drop in a 2zz or just keep it the way it is because that's what i'm going to do for mine just keep it the way it is what toyota meant to make this car so uh yes Hey guys, I know I'm doing this voiceover for this part of the video, but unfortunately uh, some officers came by at the end of my video and it kind of like ruined the ending.
so they told me to leave the premises because the commercial area and i totally respect them so i just left the area but i wanted to just uh do my own part of the video i know this is a review but i wanted to give my own uh insight on the car and what are my plans for the car so this car i purchased from copart and i honestly wanted to just flip this car but <clears throat> when i fixed this car i seen how like easy it was to fix it and when i started driving it it started making me laugh because the car is like it's it just like it's not fast but it's just like it's so funny when you romp on it um another thing is the reason why i'm going to keep the car for a little bit is because when my, i taught my brothers how to drive stick shift on this car and they really love this car now because of that i taught them within a week's time uh that goes to show this car is very easy to drive stick shift on. It's probably the easiest stick shift car I've ever encountered. Uh, if a person is looking at this uh, review to see if they want to purchase this car, I totally recommend this car in the manual mode. I mean, manual version of it. I don't know about the automatics. I've never driven them. But it's a great first starter manual car to drive. Uh, another thing is... Uh, these cars go for about $3,000 on the used market with over 180,000 miles. So far, that's what I saw. Uh, this car only has 65,000 miles, 65,000 and a half. Uh, I put 1,000 miles on it already. Uh, what I've done to the car so far was just basic maintenance, an oil change, spark plugs, air filter, cabin air filter, and that's all I had to do. I did that to all my cars that I purchased. It's just preventative maintenance, and it's a it just gives you a peace of mind. I'm sorry if I'm speaking fast. I'm just trying to get this uh, all together. Uh, the only thing I've done was the TRD strut brace, and uh, my plans for the car in the future are just to probably throw on some stock Toyota wheels from like a Yaris. Uh, maybe take this thing out to autocross because this thing handles really well. And just all in all, just keep it a daily driver. Just keep it reliable. It drinks like no gas whatsoever. And just keep the MR2 a garage queen, I guess. Because that car is not good for being a daily driver. But other than that, the car has been very well to me for these past thousand miles. And um, it's just whoever is looking into this car, I mean, I totally recommend this car. Just, you know, look over the basic stuff. But other than that, this car is great, and I hope you guys enjoy this video, and yeah, see you guys next time.